We'll be reading from the book of Job, chapter 22. The book of Job, chapter 22, and verse 1. Chapter 22, the book of Job. Then Eliphaz the Temanite answered and said, Can a man be profitable to God, though he who is wise may be profitable to himself? Is it any pleasure to the Almighty that you are righteous? Or is it gain to him that you make your ways blameless? Is it because of your fear of him that he corrects you and enters into judgment with you? Is not your wickedness great, and your iniquity without end? For you have taken pledges from your brother for no reason, and stripped the naked of their clothing. You have not given the weary water to drink, and you have withheld bread from the hungry. But the mighty man possessed the land, and the honorable man dwelt in it. You have sent widows away empty, and the strength of the fatherless was crushed. Therefore snares are all around you, and sudden fear troubles you, or darkness that you cannot see, and an abundance of water covers you. Is not God in the height of heaven? And see the highest stars, how lofty they are. And you say, what does God know? Can he judge through the deep darkness? Thick clouds cover him so that he cannot see, and he walks above the circle of heaven. Will you keep to the old way which wicked men have trod, who were cut down before their time, whose foundations were swept away by a flood? They said to God, Depart from us. What can the Almighty do to them? Yet he filled their houses with good things, but the counsel of the wicked is far from me. The righteous see it and are glad, and the innocent laugh at them. Surely our adversaries are cut down, and the fire consumes their remnant. Now acquaint yourself with him, and be at peace, thereby good will, will come to you. Receive please instruction from his mouth, and lay up his words in your heart. If you return to the Almighty, you will be built up. You will remove iniquity far from your tents. Then you will lay your gold in the dust, and the gold of a fear among the stones of the brooks. Yes, the Almighty will be your gold, and your precious silver. For then you will have your delight in the Almighty, and lift up your face to God. You will make your prayer to Him, He will hear you, and you will pay your vows. You will also declare a thing, and it will be established for you, so light will shine on your ways. When they cast you down, and you say, Exaltation will come, then He will save the humble person. He will even deliver one who is not innocent. Yes, he will be delivered by the purity of your hands. Amen. That what God, that what God cares about, is interested about his relationship with man, is the relationship God with man, but especially man's relationship with God. And the relationship depends and is evident from the thoughts and the meditations that man has for God and about God. Their thoughts, there are thoughts that please God and show the good relationship of man with God. There are thoughts that even though they are thought with good intentions by man, that do not please God. For example, a thought which the Word of God reveals to us today is what many times has reached into our hearts or we have heard with our own ears from other people and brethren. Lord, 
I love you. I do all your favors. Whatever you want, I do, Lord. I want you to be pleased with me, happy with me. And the answer of God is, when this is heard from the ears of man, man might say, he's speaking well. We have all said this one time or another, but God says something else. Do you do this for my own goodwill? Is it to my profit, to, for my gain? All these thoughts and offerings which you offer to me, give unto me, are they for my gain and for my good? Let's be careful now, the thoughts of man with man. When a man thinks, for example, I for my wife, I say, I love her and I want to offer her things. I want to make her happy. I want to, for her to be full of joy. My children, I love them and I want them to be happy. And this is right. That's how love is expressed. But in a relationship with God, is, are these our intentions? Is this what God wants from us? God waits, waits for us to be happy. Is He waiting for us so He can be full of joy? And anyway, if it is like that, and this is a crucial question, what is the joy of our Lord? How is He made happy? What is that? that pleases God. Can a man be profitable to God? Because he is good, wise. But even more the question is, can a man be profitable to himself? Because he is wise. Is it any pleasure to the Almighty that you are righteous? Or is it gain to Him that you make your ways blameless? In other words, can man, can man, you, can you ever offer anything to God? That is for His gain, or even to yourself. My beloved brethren, God is guiding us to this revelation of complete weakness, your complete weakness to do anything. Anything at all. You cannot, you yourself, you cannot be profitable to yourself, even if you labor and strive to do the will of God. How much more? Can you ever possibly offer gain to God Himself? You are like a man less than zero. And we must realize this, my brethren. Let's turn our thoughts somewhere else. Let's turn our logic, our prayer, and let's see ourselves in a different light as according with God, and even our own selves. Is it because of your fear of Him that He corrects you and enters into judgment with you? Because God fears if you sadden Him, or you do anything bad, or evil, or good, maybe you might change something in the ways of things. And now he brings us to the point in which we must turn. The first point in which we must turn all our cautions to. Your wickedness. The truth is, your wickedness is great. And your iniquity. The truth is that your iniquity is without end. So, if you realize 
your wickedness which is great before God and your iniquity which is without end then what could you possibly offer to God to yourself or to anywhere else for that matter what is the gain that you can offer since this is the truth that you have something which is great that is wickedness this is the truth and if there is something which is without end in your life it is your iniquity this is the truth man unprofitable and vile as Apostle Paul confesses who can free me from this body of death Poor man, I am. I want to do what is good, but inside of me, evil is inside of me. I want to do what is good, but inside of me, there is wickedness, hatred, iniquity, envy. This is who I am. And because I am what I am, I must confess that I cannot provoke offer, give, gain, profit to God, to myself. How can God be pleased with me? Because I did one, two, three good things and I'm happy of these things. But what, what is inside of me is without end. Wicked. How can I ever offer Him joy? How can I give Him happiness? How can I give Him anything of gain? Can I not see my righteousness which is like an old garment? And the result, verse 10, Therefore snares are all around you, and sudden fear troubles you. Darkness that you cannot see, and an abundance of water covers you. So, what is called justification, not only is not for me, but creates greater problems and in my life and in my relationship with God let's see therefore this man who testifies before God that he gives joy to God Lord do you see how just I am that Pharisee once said I give 10% of everything I have I fast two or three times a week according to your word you must be very pleased with me God you must be very proud of me because I'm not like that tax collector a thief do you think his prayer his life his thoughts his relationship with God will ever give God joy ever please God ever gave God gladness, gain, profit, and what could be the profit of God? For the devil to fall into reproach and for God to be glorified. Can this happen? The answer is never. Never. And that's why in the life of this man, blessings of God cannot enter. Even it says in verse 18, Yet he filled their houses with good things. But, far from me, the counsel of the wicked. Even though God is good to the right and the unrighteous, He reigns upon the evil and the good. He blesses. When you ask from Him, He hears, He gives unto you. But, if this is our relationship with God, God comes down and shows us another relationship which is pleasing, acceptable to Him, and which only God can suggest. Since you have realized that your wickedness is great inside of you, my beloved brethren, let's be careful of something, please. Here, of course, is the Old Testament. It's talking about natural man. But the spiritual man, the man who is born again, his heart's changed, his life has changed. Must he not confess today that we stumble in many things? 
Must we not open our hearts and say, Lord, we are not better than our fathers. Amen, brethren. Let us also say, Lord, what could we possibly offer you which is of gain? Even though if I testify Christ's name, even if I pray, how many things I do that I sat in your Holy Spirit, how many things that are in my heart that sat in you, how often I have sat in your Holy Spirit, could I possibly say that I will not sat in your Spirit again? Could I say that, that I, that the devil will not make fun of you, mock you again because of me? I cannot say that. And that's why my beloved brethren, God knowing our nature, He comes firstly to uproot every hint of justification because there is justification inside of us. We call the others unbelievers, all of us, what we call our own believers, comes out like that on its own. An unbeliever came today to church. And when we say unbeliever, unbeliever, we say that I am different from him. And we are different. But we are not that different so God can be glorified in our lives. And that's why God comes now and says, let me show you something else which will establish you, my friend, my joy, my pleasing. I will reveal to you another way, a road which will guide you to what you think you have or you are, but in reality you have never lived it or understood it. Now, acquaint yourself with Him and be at peace. Yes, the truth is that you cannot offer anything to God. The truth is that whatever you think that you offer, maybe sometimes it is before God an abomination. Even your prayer. If you haven't forgiven with all your heart, it's like an, an abom abomination before God. Come now, therefore, and go near to God, not with the joy of that I do what you want me to do, God, but with the humility that, Lord, accept me. Not like the Pharisee, like a tax collector, with your eyes turned low. You're not bold enough to look upwards. And he said, Lord, yes. Show mercy. Show mercy, Lord, for I am a sinner. How nice, my beloved brethren, today, for us to understand that that that's how we must go near God always. Not with the boasting of being born again, blessed, that God has used us at some point, but with acknowledgement of the truth. How much more could God use us and for Him to be glorified in our lives if we had understood how un unimportant, vile, we are before His eyes, truly, truly, Lord, please accept me and put peace in my heart because He is good and He is waiting for you in that way. Remember, who returned to his house justified, the Pharisee or the tax collector? I say to you, the Pharisee. In other words, the Pharisee a bit more. And even if the Pharisee, not at all, the tax collector a little bit, put peace in your heart. You will go near to him a little bit better if you go 
in more humility and you try to go near him with the acquaintance of a man who knows that he is vile and at the same time he knows that God is full of good and he accepts the sinner. He resists the proud but to the humble he gives his grace. He accepts you but go in truth, in spirit and in truth. In other words, humbly go and worship him. Fall on your knees not to meet him not to be revealed unto him but go in spirit and in truth in other words humbly to go near him and to worship him hallelujah and from then on your relationship will take another form not a form in which you imagine want or think but a form that the word of God reveals to us today a form of mercy a form of exception in righteousness a form of almightiness and unimportance almightiness of God and unimportance of yours and mine and ours my brethren today the King of glory is in our midst Amen Amen. Who are we that He is in our midst? Are we leaders, princes? We are unprofitable, vile people in which He showed compassion in His perfect and endless love for Him to visit us so He can bless us. Hallelujah. Glory be unto the name of Jesus. And that's why. Become an acquaintant of God. Go near Him humbly. Put peace in your heart. And then, good will start to come to you, which you thought you had, but it was lacking in your life. And what is good? The glory of Christ. Christ will start to be glorified in your life and not to be mocked. Good will come on to you. But how will you become an acquaintance of God now? How will you go near Him? Which is the way? Which is the road? Which is the method? I understood. I know now that I cannot go near him in this way or that way like George Godovesi but I can go near him as a worm but how? I can go near him like a vile and unimportant person but how? except therefore the law from his mouth accept today his word and say you are just Lord your words are the truth you are the Almighty receive please instruction from his mouth and lay up his words in your heart accept accept that he is the truth and you are nothing. He is the light and you are nothing. He is the life and you are nothing except His word. My beloved brethren, Amen. How nice it is and how God is happy truly when we realize when we understand with all our heart who he is and who we are how nice God brings in our hearts and how small we are all today we are smaller today but truly and how great now 
the Lord of all powers has become in our midst because we must decrease so He can increase. And today, God did not humble us, but He gave unto us a humble heart, a crushed heart, as He revealed to us the truth. He took my heart and your heart out and He revealed to us the truth. But, and His Almightiness. And that's why now, return to the Almighty. Now you can return. Because till now, you were far from Him. Without you knowing it. As you were increasing, you were far from Him. But now, as He made us small, He gave us the ability to return back to Him. Return therefore to the Almighty, and He will build you up. You will not build yourself up anymore. Yourself, who is vile, proud, justified, great, who saddens the Holy Spirit. You will not build now with your imagination a personality which is holy and blessed, which other people see you and are proud of you. Or they should be proud of you according to your opinion. But now the Lord will take the responsibility to build you up. Now He will build you up because now you have destroyed everything. And to say the truth now, He has destroyed everything. And now He will start to build us up since He threw out of our lives far away our iniquity. Because our life until now was truly in iniquity and we hadn't understood this. We thought that we offered works. We thought we did something. We thought we gave joy to the Lord. But the truth is that we were like that Pharisee. May the name of Jesus be full of glory. This is the starting point. And may today be a starting point for all of us. I don't know if it will be for me or you, but I know one thing, that this is a starting point in which man can start from, so the glory of God can enter into his life. The acknowledgement that wickedness is great inside of him and iniquity without end. And he needs, since he's understood this, he needs a new way to be built. He needs to be built up again. He needs to be built. From now on, God found a man. And I want today, with the grace of Christ, to ask from God to find a church. A church which understands her weakness, her sins, her mistakes. I want my beloved brethren today for God to bring us all there for us to say, Lord, you are the Almighty and we are nothing. Because that is the truth. And then, my beloved brethren, as Christ said, Father, glorify your name. And for us to say today, Christ, glorify your name. We cannot glorify it, Lord. So, what could we possibly offer you? What is the gain of our offering to you? What? How can we please you? We can only say one thing. We are not suitable. We are unsuitable. Please glorify your name in your church, in our country, in this world. 
From you are everything, and to you they will go back to. Glorify Christ, your holy name, in our lives. Glorify Christ, your name, the name of the Lord, in our church. We do not do this, my brethren, so all the blessings which are written, because Christ will bring them. But today, acknowledging our complete weakness, we can, we can ask from God, grace and mercy, so he can glorify His Son. Because we cannot do anything. Nothing. And all these things which are written further down. Yes, the Almighty will be your God and your precious silver, for then you will have your delight in the Almighty. All these things. For them not to be for us. We cannot take it. But for these things to be from God the Father, for Christ. Father, glorify Christ. And Jesus, glorify the Father. May the glory therefore be, always and throughout eternity, from you to you. Amen.